Welcome to Leesburg Today's Daily Update for August 10th. I'm Samantha Bartram. Authorities have linked yet another stabbing to last week's attacks in Leesburg and the 16 attacks in Michigan. In a press conference today, Leesburg Police Chief Joseph Price said the suspect description, as well as that of the car he was driving, matched the descriptions given in the Leesburg cases and in Michigan. Yesterday during our press conference, a question was asked uh, if we knew of any other attacks that occurred since our attack. And my answer was I knew of no confirmed attacks, which was completely true at that point. While we were running this press conference, our investigators uh, followed up on a lead that they had gotten about 20 minutes earlier, and they did make contact with the Toledo, Ohio Police Department and determined that on August 7th at about 7.45 p.m., there was a similar attack in Toledo, Ohio. A 59-year-old black male uh, had exited a church to grab a quick smoke. Uh, he was stabbed several times by a suspect matching the general description we're looking for and operating a vehicle matching the general description that we are looking for. Uh, our detectives have been in contact and remain in contact with both the Toledo, Ohio Police Department and uh, the Michigan State uh, Police Investigative Unit. Uh, we continue our investigation here uh, with uh, assistance from local agencies, including the Loudoun County Sheriff's Office, Virginia State Police, uh, and as I mentioned to you yesterday, um, the uh, Federal Bureau of Investigations providing assistance to us as well. While the Toledo attack came almost 24 hours after the third attack in Leesburg, Price said the investigation and police efforts are still being conducted as if the suspect were in the area. Police have released video of the suspect in the Leesburg Plaza shopping center before he attacked his third victim Friday night. In that incident, he asked a 19-year-old Hispanic male for help with his car before pulling out a hammer and attempting to hit him. The teenager was able to duck and received just a glancing blow before fleeing. In addition to the released footage, police do have video of the suspect, victim, and the attack, which they are using in the investigation. The vehicle is described as a dark green Chevy S10 Blazer with light tan trim. The SUV is estimated to be a model from between 1995 and the early 2000s. The suspect is described as a white man, somewhere between his late 20s and his 40s, about six feet tall, unshaven, with a stocky build. Days before the hammer attack, the suspect stabbed a 15-year-old boy while he was jogging and a 67-year-old man as he sat on a stoop. Both are still hospitalized, but expected to recover. The teen is listed in stable condition, while the 67-year-old is in serious condition. Police say they believe the attacks are targeted at African-American men and are racially motivated. Residents should be on alert, but not let the fear caused by the attacks disrupt their day-to-day -day activities. This is an individual, regardless of what his motivation is, and I truly believe his motivation is, is pure hatred. Um, this is an individual that's very dangerous. Um, we want our community um, to be vigilant, to be aware, but not to let someone like this control their lives. So we want them to go, up, go about their lives um, and, and enjoy it as, as they should, just to be vigilant, be aware, and, and be cautious. You can see more of Chief Price's comments as well as additional details about the investigation on our website. Anyone with information about the case or who believes they have seen the vehicle described is asked to call police at 703-771-4500. Anonymous tips may be called in to 703-443-TIPS. In other public safety news, we learned today that the 64-year-old Loudon man who received burns over 80% of his body from an accidental fire in June has died. The man, whose name has not been released, died Thursday, August 5th from injuries sustained in the June 27th residential fire in Aldi. According to fire rescue officials, the man was using a riding lawnmower when he struck a gas can starting the blaze. Crews were called to the home on Peach Orchard Lane in Aldi for a report of a house fire with a severely injured person. Emergency personnel found the man on the back porch of his home with burns over most of his body. Firefighters were able to contain the fire to the garage portion of the residence. The man was airlifted from the scene to Washington Hospital Center's burn unit. 
He remained in the Washington, D.C. hospital until his death. This is the first fire fatality in the county since December 2005, when an 85-year-old Lovettsville woman died from third-degree burns she received when her clothes caught fire while she was cooking. A debate about whether to move Leesburg's election to November surfaced again Monday night at the town council's work session. Council members considered changing the election date last November, but in the end only two supported such a move. Several council members said they feared holding a vote in November would introduce partisanship to the elections and increase the number of uninformed votes being cast. Some of these same concerns were voiced again Monday night, although it was pointed out by electoral board staff that moving to a November election would save the town around $15,000 each cycle. In addition to moving to November, the council would also need to consider whether to place elections in odd or even numbered years. While some said they wanted to get the highest voter turnout possible and expressing support for no elections in November of even numbered years, others said it made sense to align the elections with local races in odd numbered years, like the Board of Supervisors and the School Board. In the end, only two of five council members present expressed support for an election date change, although some left open the door for possibly scheduling a public input session on the matter. Mayor Kristen Umstad and Councilman Marty Martinez were absent for the meeting. Finally, Northern Virginia Community College's Waddell Gallery is preparing to host a new installment of faculty-produced art. Recent works by the Communication, Design, and Fine Arts faculty will be on display beginning Monday, August 16th through Friday, September 17th. Media, including animation, ceramics, glass, painting, photography, and printmaking is represented. The gallery is open to the public for viewing during regular business hours from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. Admission is free to all. The Waddell Gallery is located on Nova's Loudoun campus at 1000 Harry Bird Highway in Sterling. To learn more about the art exhibit, call 703-450-2627 or send an email to the address you see below. For more on these and other stories around our community, visit us online at leesburgtoday.com.